Hey Dad, Merry Christmas. This is my Christmas present to you and anyone else who's watching, why not? But uh, I figured that uh, I would play you a game of Civilization V uh, because you'd be, I think you'd be really interested in how the game models the growth of civilization over time. And uh, we're going to be playing as the Moroccan Empire. Um, we are the great Sultan Ahmad al-Mansur of the Saudi dynasty. Uh, you can pause the video and read this if you like. Uh, I am suffering from it pretty brutal sinus infection right now, which is why I sound funny, but uh, Christmas waits for only one man, and that man is not me. Um, so, here is a little brief of what is special about us compared to other civilizations, of which there are eight or ten on the map, and a couple tiny little city-states. Um, this is not a real map, it's randomly generated. We are the gateway to Africa. So we receive three extra gold and one extra culture for each trade route with a different civilization or city-state. The trade route owners receive two extra gold for each trade route sent to Morocco. Um, so we're, we want to establish these trade routes. We get more than they do from all of our trade routes. Uh, you only get this once per civilization or unique civilization or city state. So we want to trade with as many different people as possible, which means we're going to be fairly peaceful. When we're not peaceful, um, one of our special units is the Berber Cavalry. Um, we won't get these for quite a while, but they're a mounted unit that specializes in desert warfare and pro protecting Moroccan lands. They receive combat bonuses when fighting both in desert tiles and Moroccan territory, which also stack. So for fighting in desert territory that is ours, um, they're even better. And uh, then the Kasba. This is something we can build on the land. Uh, Kasba can only be built on desert tile, so we want to take over desert tiles, which most race, uh, civilizations cannot use very well at all. And the Kasba provides one additional food production and gold from that tile when we work it, uh, which is incredibly good. And it also provides the same 50% defense bonus as a fort. Uh, and we can only build it in our territory. So it's just an incredible uh, economic and defensive tile that we can build uh, because we're awesome. Now we do have to research up our, our way up to unlocking it, I'm pretty sure. But uh, so let's take a look at the land. There are two views. There's this kind of god-like view that we have here. And there's this strategic view which helps us uh, figure out how far away things are. Um, so you'll notice these tiles are showing us special things about them. This is a uh, in the right over here when you hover over a tile it tells you what's going on for that tile uh, tiles can be multiple types of terrain like this is grassland and a hill and it outputs to production production is the hammer this is a desert hill and next to a river rivers go between tiles and tiles on both sides of the river count as river tiles so this little river here that starts right here makes this tile, this tile, this tile, and this tile all a river. Now I've played Civilization quite a bit in my life. Um, various versions, starting with Civilization 2. Uh, I think I played 3, I skipped 4, and I picked up with 5 and have all of the expansions, which means that there's a lot of stuff we can do. Uh, and these games are quite long, so let's just get on with it and we'll pick up some stuff as we go. For one, um, I want to found my capital next to this mountain because later on I can build an observatory there. Uh, it means that we're going to move away from this wine. Let me show you. There's wine, but we'll still have this wine close by and we're going to start on top of this stone. That stone, sheep, 
uh, all these things are going to start right next to us. So these are our settlers. We can use them to found the city. Uh, they're units. They can be attacked and taken over by enemies. Uh, so we want to found our city really fast to start producing things. But we're going to take a turn to reposition because that's smart. Let's see. These are our warriors. Uh, when units cross a river, they automatically end their turn. That's what happened to our settlers. Normally they would be able to move two spaces. These guys can move two spaces as well, but hills require two movement. However, you can use partial movement. So we've only got one movement left, but we can move onto this river. Uh, it does look like there's a confluence of rivers here though. But hills also provide a little bit extra vision. Okay, marble is a really good resource to be near. Let's see. One, one, two, three. Okay, the marble is going to be within our city's territory. And that'll help us build wonders. The, uh, like the Pyramid of Egypt or the Great Wall. They're not restricted to particular civilizations in this game. Anyone can build them. But, uh, so, let's move on. <clears throat> there are also barbarians that might start attacking us eventually. Alright, we're going to found a city, our capital city, as a matter of fact. Marrakech has been founded. Alright, so that means we need to choose a couple things. First, let us scope this out. Alright, looks like we're kind of coastal here. Um, building a city on the edge of the ocean is a great idea, especially if you can manage it next to a river as well. Um, but we will need to give this city some breathing room before we found another, and it will take a while. So, um, we are... I want to... Yes, we're going to go production focus here. And do I want culture? Or do I want scouting? Let's build a scout. Um, there are interesting things to find out in this world, and we want to start early. We also get to choose our research. Um, we have our choice between, these are the basic researches. We just finished agriculture, um, which ba lets us build farms. Um, farms will increase our food production and that will help grow our population. Now we can choose between pottery, animal husbandry, archery, and mining. Uh, the top two choices here are pottery and animal hus husbandry. Um, these little symbols indicate we have advisors that want us to go one way or the other. Science wants us to go mining, military wants us to go archery, economic wants us to go animal husbandry, and our foreign advisor recommends pottery. Um, we want to found a religion fairly quickly. Um, and pottery is going to be the way to go for us. We do have these nice sheep here that we can build uh, a pasture for. So that's tempting. Plus this gives us an extra trade route. Uh, reveals horses on the map. And allows us to build caravans. All those things are wonderful. Only the pasture is an immediate bonus. Um, pottery lets us build a granary where we can store food. Because of course pottery helps you store things. Um, and a shrine because I assume uh, ceramic works of arts. Most of the oldest pottery in the world is uh, religious in nature. The uh, Venusian ultra female, like large breasts and butt statues found in Europe date back to like 22,000 BC or something. So we're gonna go for the shrine because we do wanna found a religion. Uh, there are some desert related uh, religious bonuses that we would really like in our civilization and we are done <clears throat>
So there's more sheep. Uh, is it close enough to us? Uh, we can eventually claim tiles. We can eventually work tiles up to three spaces away. One, two, three. Yes, we can get that sheep. Um, it means this is too far, but this is close, and this is close enough, and this is close enough. Just wait till our cities expand. It's going to be awesome. And we're done. Note that pottery is ticking down up here as we research it. This blue bar will fill. Um, the date is being shown at the end of every turn. Our warriors are creeping around. Our scouts won't be as slow as our warriors. All right, we found some goodies. One, two, three. We can get this wine, but this cattle and sheep are out of our reach. So we might consider founding another city over there. All right, our scouts were just created. There's a little symbol for them hiding in the city. Uh, it also prompts us to choose something else to produce. We want a monument, it'll finish in four turns, right when pottery finishes, and then I guess we can start our shrine or our granary. All right, so these guys are much better at moving through harsh terrain, which we are surrounded by. Rivers will still end their turn. Ah. Uh, all right, so we now found some ancient ruins. When we collect these, we'll get some sort of bonus. Hey, spices. Are the spices close enough to us? One, two, three. Perfect. We do want those spices. Now oh, look, enemy warriors. Sou Maria, rainha de Portugal. Já nos conhecemos. Maria the first of Portugal. I am Maria, Queen of Portugal. Have we met? You seem familiar or maybe not. Kind of indifferent. Let's discuss. We can tell her a couple things. We can publicly denounce her. We can ask to declare friendship officially. And we can tell her to back off and not settle near us. None of those are excellent choices right now. Sim. We can trade stuff. Looks like she's making a little more money than us and has a little more in the bank. Um, but otherwise, kind of on the same footing, it seems. When we talk about negotiating, she might reveal some of her advantages to us. We can declare war, and we can demand things from her with nothing in return, which we, of course, won't. So she feels neutral about us, which is fine. So a potential trading partner, not an enemy, is what I should call her. Now, uh, we can duke it out with her if we feel like it. Uh, we have no particular advantage over her, and fighting in forests or on hills is advantageous, so we would lose if we attacked her from the grassland here. Uh, it does look like we're out of stuff. These guys are probably just searching for um, the same kind of stuff we are. And note that if she tries to move past us, um, it'll end her turn because our warriors are here. Not that these guys could move particularly fast. Here's a lot of bananas. This would be, there's, settling around here would be great. Um, so hopefully these warriors are fairly f distant from her actual uh, place, uh, from her founded city. All right, ruins explored. You find survivors lost in the ruins. In gratitude, they settle in one of your cities, increasing its population. Well, that must be Marrakech. I'll note we have a two here. That is the size of our city, and it's its population. Same thing. Um, this 12 indicates how many turns it'll be before a new citizen is uh, born thanks to a surplus of food gathered. The more surplus food you gather, the faster that population will show up. So now that we have two, that's actually giving us two extra food and one extra production. However, um, every new citizen also eats food. Uh, which means that the amount of surplus decreases. So uh, we have we have five food coming in, four being eaten by citizens, 
uh, yeah. But it's good to have. The extra production is really nice, and it means we'll finish building other things first. All right, spices all up in there. Our scouts want to move. Let's... We still have one move left. Let's travel around to the west, I assume, and see, kind of open ourselves up in a sphere. Okay, they shuffled over this way. Kind of following them. Okay, mountains and Panama City. So Panama City is a city-state, which means it will only ever have one city, unlike other civilizations, which are more like computer-controlled characters, like my own civilization, that will grow and expand and become very mighty. City-states will always be fairly small, though occasionally mighty. Um, you can sway over city-states for sweet benefits, like uh, unique bonuses and all sorts of other goodies. Uh, trade, science. We can establish trade routes with this guy. We'll want to quite early. Uh, let's see. So, also, when you first meet a... If you're the first person to meet one, you get a boost of 30 gold. Note that we have 42 gold, so that was pretty much uh, three times the amount of gold we had to begin with. It's not much in the long run. But it is quite nice. Now, we can give them a gift and earn influence. Um, when you reach certain amounts of influence, they become friendly and they offer you their trait bonus. A befriended maritime city-state will boost the food of your capital when friends uh, and all of your cities when they are allies. So if we become friendly, they will give us food. They are, by nature, friendly, um, and when they make requests, they will often be peaceful and constructive, which is perfect for us. And if we become an ally with them, uh, they will give us, they will allow us to trade for furs, or they will give us furs from these foxes here. So that's pleasant. Um, and we've met that city-state. Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it, What makest thou? Yes. Does the clay tell us what to make, or do we tell the clay? I think we all know the answer to that, Dad. Okay, this allows our city to build the granary, which provides food, helping our cities grow large. Also allows us to build the shrine, the first faith-producing building in the game. Ugh. <clears throat> Dying of disease. Uh, we definitely want faith. Okay, so we finished that. Let's choose our next research. Uh, so, technology comes in a tree, and every one you unlock generally unlocks one or more other technologies. Pottery leads us into writing, I assume through cuneiform tablets and such. Um, writing is wonderful because it gives us libraries. Um, we gain the ability to build the great library as long as we're the first one to finish it we get a free technology which is a fantastic it allows us to build stonehenge if we research calendars um, that also lets us construct plantations so that we can harvest and stone works to take advantage of marble and stone which we do have both of those nearby sailing allows us to build work boats warships Cargo ships for trade routes allows more trade routes and creates fishing boats. And of course, we have our three original ones, which we will eventually need to research all of. I'm going to go. The Great Library is a wonderful, wonderful thing to capture um, early in the game. That free technology really can put you ahead. Uh, what are we aiming for? Where are our Berber cavalry? I think they're pretty advanced. 
There they are. Many, many, many moons from now, we may have Berber cavalry. <sighs> and with chivalry comes our Kasba. So if we want chivalry, this is how we have to do it. And there are many good bonuses along the way. Markets will give us a nice trade route boost. So let's go into writing. Well, no, let's do animal husbandry first. Hmm. Five turns for husbandry. The construction bonus from Animal Husbandry is going to help us build the Great Library faster, so let's begin there. Okay, our unit needs orders. We can walk through their territory, but it will kind of piss them off. So let's not. We found some copper. <clears throat> not something I can take advantage of immediately. Ah, and another city-state. They'll have met them first, but it will be good for us to meet them and perhaps establish a trade route. Also, it looks like this patch of coast is quite clear. It might be a great place for a city. They are monument. It's about to finish. That'll give us time to build our... Well, we want a worker. Workers help us improve the land around our cities and are incredibly important. How much does it cost to purchase this shrine? Way too much. We don't even have nearly that much gold. Yeah, let's get the shrine going first and establish ourselves as a religious power. Cape Town. They are maritime, just like Panama City. Irrational, so they're a little random about what they ask for. And they have incense. They give us 15 gold, because we met them second. Uh, they will make fine allies and good trading partners, thanks to their proximity. <sighs> Bison, sheep, a lot of interesting stuff in here. Um. <clears throat> Excuse me. Move here, and then here, kind of trapping them. Ooh. We met Brussels. We were not the first. They are cultured. Culture is good. Culture is let us, lets us establish social policies and um, expand our territory and sway other people. They are also irrational and they also provide incense. So we're surrounded by a lot of nice little trading partners. Let us finish up our shrine, and that will be it for this video. Oh, we can adopt a social policy. So, there are many social policy areas. Um, and then each one has a couple sub-policies. We can choose to adopt tradition, liberty, honor, and piety at the beginning of the game. Uh, for us, we're going to want commerce, I think, uh, or rationalism. Uh, every single policy you accept makes further ones more expensive, so does founding other cities, which can definitely cause 
stagnation if you make a lot of cities. Here, pardon me for one second. My apologies. So um, we're going to go for tradition. It's good for small empires. We don't want to get too big. Um, and increases our cultural output at the capital. Uh, as well as unlocking a special wonder called the Hanging Gardens that we can create. And if we cre adopt all of them, we'll get extra food and free aqueducts in all of our cities. Uh, so that's nice stuff. We'll probably go tradition... Uh, patronage might be nice. Uh, commerce, rationalism, exploration. We'll take a look at them when they're available. These you have to research into higher eras to adopt. Liberty is nice, but it's for people who want a lot of cities. Honor is nice, but it's for combat-focused people. And piety is nice. It's for people purely focused on culture um, and religion. And for us, I think tradition is going to be a nice mix of food and culture. So with our first policy, we adopt tradition. Our capital now produces three culture. Uh, on top of the two that we were producing, or three that we were producing naturally, we just doubled our culture output. So the next policy is going to come pretty fast. Uh, and our choices will be made then. All right, we're going to finish out this turn and then save lots of bananas. I want to see everything around my city, and then we'll sweep around again. All right, so that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I love you, Dad. Merry Christmas.